Hello YouTubers. I uh, thought I'd share a video about repairing a voltmeter on an instrument cluster on a uh, C3 Corvette. I'm working on my uh, C3 VET. It's a 1978 and uh, totally rebuilding the interior. A lot of my uh, gauges, uh, tachometer and da uh, instrument lights and displays wasn't weren't working properly. So uh, when I started getting into it, I realized that uh, my printed circuit was in pretty sad shape. Someone had actually already been in there and tried to repair one of the traces, as you can see here, but and then also here. Um, so a lot of the gauges weren't working properly, and the uh, lights for the illumination wasn't working properly. So I totally rebuilt my... This I uh, rebuilt both the center console and the tax speedometer console, and uh, basically what I did is just clean it up uh, real good. Uh, took a look at all the gauges and everything. Took the whole thing apart. Replaced the uh, printed circuit. You can see how much nicer that looks. And uh, got all done with it. Put it all back together. Everything worked perfect except the voltmeter didn't work. So. Uh, I started tearing into it and I realized that uh, on each one of these gauges you can see right here this yellow and there's like a blue underneath that circuit um, printed circuit there's another one there those are resist resistors that they're using to uh, calibrate the gauges and I found out that the resistor that goes to my voltmeter was actually burned open it's basically a resistor that's in series with the meter uh, to drop uh, voltage to the meter and we'll get into the, a little bit more of that in a minute but I want to show you this is where I actually removed the meter from it just basically pokes through this metal housing it's got three studs on it and uh, one of the studs actually doesn't do anything but ground the meter and one stud goes nowhere in the meter but it does allow the circuit to make connection and then the current flows from this is the positive here flows through the resistor and then to the stud on the um, on the voltmeter. I think you get a clear picture of it once I uh, switch over here to the uh, to the other table where I'm I'm going to show you what I did to fix that. I went online and I looked to see if I could buy a resistor and I couldn't find any. And they do sell the voltmeters for about sixty bucks, but my problem was the voltmeter was good. It was just the resistor, so I decided I'd do a little investigation and. Uh, just go ahead and uh, supplement a different resistor in there. Uh, while I was at it, I was going to tell you too, uh, this is the new uh, bezel, instrument bezel here. And uh, I bought one that was made for the DIN style radio. So I'm going to be putting in a stereo and uh, junk the old 1970s AM FM stereo. Uh, that wasn't even an 8-track. That's just AM FM and that was it. And two speaker. My, my car didn't have the four speaker system. But anyway, back to the voltmeter. We're going to go over here to the other table. I'm going to show you the voltmeter, show you how it works, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix mine. So here we go. Okay, here I am set up on the table. That's the voltmeter there. And you know from the circuit that I just showed you on the back side, you can always determine what stud does what. And you see there's three studs there. And uh, I've marked them. That stud there is the positive stud. And that stud there is the negative and uh, this is basically the last stud there. It's just a mounting stud. It doesn't do much of anything except for it allows connection with the uh, printed circuit and the resistor. So when this thing was in the car, that pin there would go to the ground on the circuit, um, printed circuit. And then this is the resistor that burned open. It's a thick film resistor. And you see it slides over those two studs like so. And when you turn the key on in the car, it applies 12 volts to this stud right here. And the current actually flows through the resistor and then to the positive stud of the meter. And then, of course, when you have a resistor in series with the meter, it's a series circuit. You're going to drop some of the voltage on the meter. You're going to drop some of the voltage on the resistor. And I've actually drawn a circuit to show you what that looks like. Uh, Here's your battery, here's your ignition switch, there's the resistor that's in series with the voltmeter, 
and of course the ground. So it's a, a series circuit and basically the only two things in the circuit uh, besides the ignition switch and the battery are the uh, calibration resistor and the voltmeter itself. So what I started out doing over here I have a variable DC power supply and you'll see these two wires here actually go to my multi multimeter which I'm going to be measuring the DC voltage that I'm applying to the meter and then I also have these two wires here that actually are going to apply the voltage to the meter so if you were to turn this voltmeter over like so trying to hold the camera and do all this at the same time and you were attached the black lead which is a negative to the negative post of the meter and the positive lead to the positive side of the meter to the stud that's sticking out and the first thing I did is I just determined what voltage it required to actually read 13 volts center of the scale probably the most accurate part of the meter and what I did is I just turned this voltage up and you can see the meter this is directly across the power meter and directly across the voltmeter and I keep increasing this and I look at the meter and I brought this up until I read about 13 like so and I determined that at 13 volts it was about 6.8 volts dropped on the meter to actually get it to read 13 today I'm showing 6.6 6.7 you could say um, but that was just to determine how much voltage was required across the meter to read 13 okay so once I did that now we're going to go over here to the actual drawing again. That would be a little easier since I only got two hands. Here's what I did so far. We just demonstrated that to, for the voltmeter to read 13 volts it required 6.8 volt drop across it. And then at the same time I also measured the meter impedance, the voltmeter impedance, and it came up to 124 ohms. So now I realize that if 13 volts is going to be applied to this thing in the car, the resistor that's going to be in series with it is going to be, have to be approximately the same value because I'm going to have to drop about the same amount of voltage on the resistor and the meter. So how I did, what I did to determine that, I just took a potentiometer, which I have here, a 2K ohm potentiometer, and wired it in series with the voltmeter. I'll show you that on my sheet here. It's probably easier to see. I just substituted in the potentiometer for, for this resistor right here. What I'm trying to do is determine what this resistor value is going to be. Now originally what I was going to do is I was just going to put the potentiometer in there and then wire it into the harness and just have it so I could uh, calibrate it and then just tape it off to the harness but I decided that was a little too bulky and that car is really tight when you start to put this panel in there's all kind of things behind it that it can hit it's a real tight clearance in there and everything so I decided what I would do is just select a resistor and put it in place of it so it would be more compact so all I did is substitute this, res this um, potentiometer in and uh, I turned the pot all the way counterclockwise so that the entire 2k ohm resistance and the meter are in series. I set my voltmeter or I set my power supply to 13 volts, slowly adjusted my potentiometer until I read 13 on my meter. I then took the potentiometer out of the circuit, measured the resistance of it, and it came up to 120 ohms, which is about what I expect since you're dropping about the same amount of voltage on both the resistor and, and the voltmeter. The resistances are going to have to be almost the same. So I came up with 120 ohms, and uh, all I'm going to do is substitute in a 120 ohm resistor. This is a wire wire round wound resistor. It should be uh, very stable, and it's also three watts, which is way more than I need. And by the way, 
if you have 244 ohms of, of uh, total resistance in the circuit, which I do here, which is resistance of the meter, impedance of the meter, and the resistor in series, you come up with 244, and you come up with 53 milliamps of, of current. And from that, you can determine what the wattage rating of this resistor needs to be. So if you use the formula I squared R, you know this 53 milliohms flowing through the resistor. You know what the value of the resistor is, which is 120. You, I come up to 337 milliwatts. So a 3 watt resistor is in, in excess of what I need, but it'll never warm up. It won't burn open or so on. Now, I'm going to demonstrate how that works. I may have to put the camera down for just a moment. Okay. All I've done was uh, substitute in the resistor in series with the meter. So, I have my positive lead coming to the resistor. Current's going to go flow, flow through the resistor into the positive post of the voltmeter and then return to the supply out through the negative post. And these wires again go over to the variable DC supply. And then I'm measuring my voltage on my multimeter. This is the voltage that's going to be applied to the meter in series with the resistor through these two wires here. And that goes over here, as you've seen before, as my voltmeter. I'm set to read 20 volts DC. That's the range I'm on. And I'll show you that the meter will read, will be a, a linear uh, situation since I've calibrated it at 13 volts I can drop it down to the whole range of the meter which is 8 all the way up to 18 you'll see that the voltage is applied will allow the meter to read correctly okay first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and crank up the voltage to 8 this is the mo this is the voltage is being applied to the meter both the multimeter and the voltmeter with the resistor in series with it and if I turn this right up to 8 our voltmeter should also read 8. And right around 8. Okay, look at the meter. Reading 8, pretty close. Okay, going on up to 13. This is where I actually started my calibration at. Kind of in the middle of the range, middle of the scale. This should be linear, but you know how things are is not always exactly perfect. All right, there we have 13. And you'll notice the meter's reading 13. And we'll take it on up to 18 just to demonstrate it. And there we are, 18, and a meter's reading 18. And you got to realize, even though I'm applying 18 volts, you know, part of it's being dropped on the meter and part of it's being dropped on the resistor. And I'll show you what I have in mind. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the resistor, and I'm just going to put a couple of ring terminals on it maybe insulate it with some heat shrink and when I put the meter back into the panel I take the two ring terminals and go right across the studs that are sticking out and probably place that right about there and that'll be tight to the to the panel it won't give me any problems with the uh, clearance or like I said originally I was going to just put the pot in there but the, the wire was going to be hanging down and probably get hooked on a lot of things trying to get the thing in there. But I'm going to tell you something, putting these panels in is not an easy job. But anyway, I just want to show you how I'm going to calibrate my meter, and that was because I couldn't find one of these resistors. I figured Corvette America or somebody like that would have one. I couldn't find one. 
and uh, I went through this process to find out what the resistance should be and I noticed there's a 12 on here and as you recall I came up with 120 ohms that gave me the proper calibration and this says 12 I don't know if that would meant it was 120 or what but right now it's blown open and uh, I couldn't uh, I couldn't find one I did see one uh, I think it was on Corvette America the whole meter and it looked like it had the resistor with it but it was like 60 bucks and there's nothing wrong with this meter so I'm just going to substitute that resistor in there and uh, that should do the job well I appreciate you watching my video and I hope this helps you fix your uh, voltmeter sometime if you ever have that problem and uh, I wouldn't hesitate to fix my other meters I noticed my other meters also have the oil pressure fuel meter and the um, uh, what is that one there I got fuel fuel temp water temp and oil pressure and all of them have those resistors on there but they appear to be good because I like I said I put this in and everything worked fine except the voltmeter uh, so I'm gonna put that voltmeter in there put the resistor on there slap it in the car and see what happens I'm sure it's gonna work fine thanks for watching